Here at Daytona, we have a perfect day to kickstart a new series of Winston Cup racing. And today, it's NASCAR's all-star race. The 14 fastest of 1996 in two 10-lap sprints for $370,000. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing your all-star lineup for the 19th annual Bush Clash. Drawing 14th and last position, the 1995 Winston Cup champion, number 24, Jeff Gordon. Starting 13th, rookie clash starter from Owensboro, Kentucky, Number 37, Jeremy Mayfield. Twelfth on the grid, his second clash. Number 22, from South Boston, Virginia, Ward Burton. Eleventh, number 25, rookie clash starter from Newburgh, Maine, Ricky Craven. Selecting tenth, number 16, from Franklin, Wisconsin, Ted Musgrave. Starting ninth, six-time Clash winner, seven-time Winston Cup champion, number three, Dale Earnhardt. Eighth position. Rookie Clash driver, number 99, Jeff Burton. Picking seventh, 1991, Daytona 500 mile champion, native of Salinas, California, number 28, Ernie Irvin. Drawing six, rookie Clash starter, number 30 from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Johnny Benson. Fifth place, his third Bush Clash start from Corpus Christi, Texas, number 18, Bobby Labonte. Fourth position, two-time and defending Daytona 500-mile champion, defending Clash champion number 88, Dale Jarrett. Third position, 1989 Winston Cup champion from St. Louis, Missouri, number two, Rusty Wallace. Outside of row one, 18-time Winston Cup winner, number six, from Batesville, Arkansas, Mark Martin. And on the pole, the 1985 Bush Clash winner, the 1984 and defending Winston Cup champion, number five, Texas, Terry Levante. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your starting field for the 1997 Bush Clash. <laughs> Drivers to your cars. about 10 miles per hour down the back stretch. The man everyone is talking about as always in this race is starting ninth and he's standing by with Dick Bergen right now. Well, it's a go-fast kind of race, and this is a go-fast kind of driver, Dale Earnhardt. He's made this show 10 times. He has won it six of the 10. How about it, Dale? You ready to go get him? Not quite, but I'm getting buckled up here. <laughs> is there any strategy for this event other than running flat out? You're right, flat out. Well, that's the way he's going to have to run it. He's got a great horse to run it in, Ken Squire. This is the same car that finished second in last year's Daytona 500. The Duke speaks. The man in black, the intimidator, ready to give it a go here today. Hello, everyone, and nice to have you with us at Speed Weeks coming up the 125, the 300, the 500, all on CBS this year. And joining us once again to do all of that 
the two-time Winston Cup champion, Ned Jarrett. Let's talk about this race for just a moment. Well, to get into Ken, you had to win a pole position during the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup season. Fourteen drivers did that, but one of them was not eligible for the Bush Clash. Bobby Hamilton actually won two poles during the season, but Richard Petty, his car owner, chose not to carry the Bush decal on his race car. And that's a family thing, the choice of his own to make, and he's in the garage today. So, with uh, him out of it, there were 13 of the pole winners that's in the race, and then there's a wild card entry, and that is Rusty Wallace coming from the second round fastest qualifiers. It's a two-segment race. They run 10 laps flat out, and then they stop. They can change tires, service the cars, and then they run 10 more laps with an inverted start, and that's where it really gets inciting. And the caution laps do not count in this race, and they're running for a purse of $370,000. <laughs> I have to tell you, Richard Petty, 59 years of age, was saying that the reason that he was not in this race was because he'd have trouble with his mother, Elizabeth, if he ever ran that kind of a decal. <laughs> Remember 1981? Well, if you were here, you saw a great finish. Right to the line came Benny Parsons, and the guy just barely in front of him, the loser the year before, was the winner that year. And he's been in 12 of these clashes. It's a delight to have Darrell Waltrip join us. Yeah, thank you, Ken, very much. Uh, Let's this talk is a strategy. great race. Yeah, it's a great race. Uh, the first strategy is to have that attitude that Earnhardt just had. <laughs> Man, somebody ticked him off before they even dropped the green flag. So attitude is part of it. Everybody's got to be in this race. They do things to the cars a little different. They tape the grills up where the cars... I mean, you're going to melt this thing down. It's two five-lap qualifying uh, runs, if you want to look at it that way. They're going to melt them down. you got to hold it wide open at all costs. And you want to lose the first segment so you can start in the front and win the second segment. But the nature of a race driver is to <laughs> yeah. pass everybody they possibly can. They want to go to the front if they can. You take Jeff Gordon, start back there in 14th position. i got to feel that he's, he wants to check his car out, see if he can pass somebody, and he'll be able to find that out in the first couple of laps, and then if it don't work too good for him, then he can just stay back there and start up front in the second race. Yeah, everybody's got to be in the gate. The spotter's got to be on his toes. We've got a short race here. Gotta be, everybody's got to be sharp. The crew chief's got to be helping the driver. The driver's got to have that game face on. This is an exciting race. They kind of just feel each other out for the first 10 laps. They may just kind of rub each other in that first 10 laps. Look out in the second 10, though. That's when... Uh, you better wake up, Leroy. And, Ken, the, 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 the cars are set up a little different for this race than they are for the Daytona 500 because of the shortness of it. So we're just about down to it, ready to get that command to fire this one up and get the 1997 Winston Cup season underway and with now, this, the Bush Clash. Let's go trackside. Today's Grand Marshal, the Regional Director of Public Supermarkets, Mr. Ralph Phillips. Gentlemen, start your engine. once again over Daytona. We'll be back with a start in just a moment. Roll out Daytona. Back of the field getting organized. Different colors on that number 24. Yeah, that's his new paint job. If that other car was a rainbow, this must be a thunderstorm here. Mm -hmm. It's a dark cloud coming at you. Just for this race. Race analysis here, Ned. Well, there are 14 cars starting the race, 10 laps this first segment, 25 miles, and the winner can take home $30,000. Bill Elliott ran over 197 miles an hour to win this race back in 1987. Of course, that was before the days of the restrictor plates. Track analysis, Darrell? Yeah, what, what we've got here is that this track is 31 degrees through the corners, uh, pretty high bank, uh, only Talladega is higher. And then as we move off the corner, that's off turn two there, and you move down the straightaway, or into the travel, actually. The travel's 18 degrees, and it doesn't drive that way. It did fit. The travel feels fairly flat, so not a real big transition out of the travel onto the short straightaways, which are banked six degrees, just like the back straightaway is. But let me tell you, when you come off that back straightaway six degrees into that 31-degree banking, that, my friend, is a real ride with a lot of downforce. And on this two-and-a-half-mile track, the car that seems to cut the best and have the most power coming off that number two turn has been the number 88 
of Jarrett, who's driving the same car in which he won this race a year ago. Manufacturers break down for this race, seven Fords, four Chevrolets, three Pontiacs, ready for the go. Yeah, it takes a lot of horsepower to do what he does over there, and, and everybody knows that he's got the horsepower. If he can get himself in a position, he should be a real favorite in this race. Take a look at the end cars here. You're riding with Jeff Gordon, shotgun position, last on the field, 14th. That looks like a long way to the front, doesn't it? <laughs> Ricky Craven starts 11th, pride of New England, in the Budweiser, number 25. Ernie Irvin's number 28, he'll start 7th today, right in the middle of this flock. And then there's last year's winner, Jarrett, number 88, outside of that second row. The, the, you got to tell yourself it's a 10-lap race. It's 10 laps to go in the Daytona 500, and you got to have at it right now if you're going to win the thing. Good analogy. Okay, they got one the lap. You know, I swear I think Earnhardt has a big advantage. He can think like that. And the other guys are kind of, like I said, the first 10 laps, they kind of feel each other out. Excuse me, pardon me, can I get in here? He doesn't feel that way. <laughs> the starting order for the second segment of the Bush Clash, inverted from how they finished in segment one. We wondered how the drivers would approach this first segment. I'll try to maneuver around, see what my car can do by itself or, or you know, around other cars, the first 10 lap segment. And then uh, after that, you know, that's when my strategy starts coming in. If, if I can't win the first segment, then, uh, then I think that, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to be somewhere mid-pack uh, so that I, it's a little bit easier to try to get to the front for the second segment. A lot of guys, they say if you, if you leg back in the first segment and you end up starting in the front, uh, it's better. But, I mean, most of the guys know it's not because just about the time you get to the first corner, you'll get drafted by in the back straightaway. I race for every position uh, because that's what I do. So, you know, we're going to try to lead anything we can or be as high up in the finishing order as we can uh, just because the fans expect that uh, and, and, and deserve, you know, that. Mark Martin, his 10th appearance in the Clash. Three drivers have been here for 11 previous runs. They include Terry Labonte and Rusty Wallace in this one as we get set. And, of course, Earnhardt coming to green this time by. Well, they get the uh, engines revved up and get ready to go when the pace car pulls off the track coming off of turn four. Yeah, we got a new pace car driver. Ken. And Buster Otten is taking over for the late Elmo Langley, two-time Winston Cup winner who died of a heart attack while we were in Japan at the end of the year. I think in those pieces we just saw, some drivers drive with their heart, some drivers drive with their head, some drivers drive for the mighty dollar. That's what we got here. Out of four. I'd like to have a heart monitor on those guys right now because mine's beating 900 miles an hour. Pace car is in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 1997 Winston Cup style. Boy, big move for Labonte. He got a great start. That may have been set up. Him and uh, Mark may have decided to do that. I think Mark jumped right down behind him as soon as Labonte jumped out in front. Ernie Urban tries for the inside three wide into one and busts his way through. Coming up to speed, they won't attain full speed till about turn three. Here's Earnhardt looking on the inside of Bobby Labonte, three wide. That's the Earnhardt trademark. Coming off of that second turn, he got the draft. And here he goes, passing them. Bobby Labonte going backwards, Earnhardt going forwards. Yeah, Labonte, I watched him in practice. That Pontiac is not as fast as that Chevrolet was last year. They've still got some work to do. They come to complete lap number one. Terry Labonte out in front, hanging right on the rear bumper. It's the number six. The colors of Mark Martin, and right with him comes Rusty Wallace in the number two. So as you stack them up at the present time, it's Chevy and a couple of Fords. I'm pretty disappointed. 
Earnhardt, he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> He's kind of hung up right where he started. Uh, and those four guys out front are just booking on. So that's big. Yeah, they're hooked up in single file out there while the others race for position back there, and they're just pulling away. Yeah, they won't get away. There's no way you can get away. As soon as these guys back here bunched up, get lined up, they'll catch them back. But I'm surprised Earnhardt couldn't go any further up than he did. Well, he doesn't really have any room there now, Darrell. There's not much of a place for him to go. No, it's not. He bumper to bumper, as we say. Door handle to door handle. Coming around a complete lap number two. Oh, First. here he goes. He's looking down on Ernie there. He decides that might not be the place to do that, so he backs off. Oh, here, oh, oh. man. Now, backs off and got passed. You know something? That's exactly what happened. And uh, That's a replay of last year. When you don't think right Earnhardt's turning into the strategist here, do you? <laughs> well, I can't believe it. Maybe he, he this is out. This is not what we would expect from him, I know. 186.6 that last lap. Terry Lamonte leading. First time since 85, he's led in the clash. And, and you heard him say in the opening, Ken, they changed motors, they changed the chassis, they've made a lot of changes. Look like it's working. The 1985 winner of the event comes down out of turn four. Leading once again, Mark Martin is in second, Wallace is in third, Dale Jarrett up to fourth. Keep your eye on that fourth place car, number 88. Picked up to 187.7 on the, the last you know, and that's down a couple of miles, miles an hour over qualifying speed. So, uh, you know, they're not set up, setting a blistering pace by any means. Take a look at this. Craven just picked up two spots as he moved out to Ernie Urban. Challenges Ward Burton in the 22 to Dick Bergman. Larry McReynolds is Earnhardt's new crew chief this year. So far, Earnhardt hasn't said a word to McReynolds, who is just standing here in the pits watching television, shaking his head. He said this was not the plan. They did want to go to the front. They don't know what's wrong with the car. They won't let them do that, though. Boy, did you see Ernie Irvin? He was three wide down on the apron and showed a little maturity there. He backed off. <laughs> that was a smart move ah. to back off because it backed Craven got trouble. Craven got left out of the draft and slid back. Irvin has a fast race car. Here he goes again. He's going to make it three wide into one. He has a run. He uh, might make it work this time. Yeah, he's got the he's got the uh, position this time, Ned, and there he goes. He's got a fast car, and he'll, be, he'll help the guys up there in front of him if he catches them. 14 cars starting 16 a year ago. Good field. One wild card, Rusty Wallace, for the third time in his career, the wild card selection where they'd have a drawing from the blimp. Don't look now, but we're coming up on halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one gets your blood going. It really does. And, and you know, that surprises me, the four cars that are up front like they are. I knew Terry starting on the pole had it, a, you know, that's a good place to start, but I didn't know if he could stay there or not. He's hanging right there, and I think that threesome back behind them have hooked up in single file, and they're gaining on the leaders. That's the 99 of Jeff Gordon leading that threesome. You're not going to get away very long if you can keep everybody in line. Everybody will get back together if they'll stay a single file. There's that trio running just behind the front four, led by Jeff Burton. And you see directly behind him, the 16 of Musgrave, and then Johnny Benson. Now here's yeah. Ernie Urban, squeezing one off on the inside. That's gonna move him into eighth. Drop Ward Burton to ninth. Benson stays seventh, Musgrave sixth. Burton, that trio moving in a little. Yeah. See, that's the worst and thing can happen to Ernie. They get side by side and he, he's stuck. There he goes, he made it 10. Three packs of cars as we get down to the side this first segment. Those front four are saying, boy, just let these laps run out. And the next three back there are saying, how many more we got to go? <laughs> All right. So maybe more time. Mayfield in 10th spot, number 37. Well, I never would have believed it, but uh, it looks to me like Earnhardt and Gordon are positioning themselves for the second 10 laps. I think that's exactly what's happening. Unbelievable qualifying yesterday, and the man on the pole for the Daytona 500 next Sunday is standing by with Mike Joy. He's the 95 Craftsman Truck Series champ, Ken, and he'll start his first ever Daytona 500 from the pole. Mike Skinner, what are you learning from what you see here in these first 10 laps? I'll tell you, I can't wait to do that next year. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> well, he's qualified for the Bush Clash, any surprises from what you've seen thus far? Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, Dale didn't get a little bit better start, but uh, he's getting to be a pretty good strategist. He, this
It's a long ways from over. That's right. Earnhardt, of course, is Mike Skinner's teammate in Winston Cup Racing this year, Ken. Mike Skinner on the pole for the Daytona 500. And Grissom will start along beside him for Larry Hedrick. Ken, right now you got Head running first, you got Hart running second, and you got Money running third. <laughs> really what happens? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Head, Hart, and Money. There they go. But there's a lot of heart in that number two for sure. Yeah, and that 88 is sitting there maybe in the best place of all of them. If he's as strong as they say he is, this could be ideal for him. I don't believe he's as strong as he showed in practice, Darrell. I don't believe that car is working quite as well as it maybe did in practice. And that other group has caught up to him there now, the other three cars. So now you have a seven-car draft up front. Mark Martin perched right there in second spot. Looked like he was going to take a shot out of two. Wind it up. Dale Jarrett back there in fourth place giving us these pictures at 190 miles an hour. You're watching it live, the Bush Clash to start the Winston Cup season. Next Sunday, the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. It's right here on CBS with some 80 cameras. So 80, that's right, to bring you all the action. Ah, they continue to move them around in the draft. Right to the outside goes Jarrett. He's looking up there. Are we? There. That was. We're coming up on the uh, halfway, aren't we? Ten laps. I mean, this is the last lap right here. First segment coming First down. Segment. This is where it gets interesting. Who's got what? Here comes Rusty trying to make a move. Or Mark Martin. Or Mark Martin had gotten around Rusty Excellent. Wallace, and he's trying to make a move. He wants to afford to win it, but I don't think he's going to win no. this first segment. Terry Labonte has Terry, him covered. Terry's got him covered this time. Down they come to complete the first half into the line, and to start dead last will be Terry Labonte. Right with him comes Martin to the outside, shipping it forward across the stripe with Rusty Wallace in third. Well, it'll be interesting to see what'll happen with those guys that were out back in this one. Now, you see, they'll be able to come in, make a pit stop, and service those cars, make some changes. Some of them will certainly want to do that and see if they can do better the next one. CBS Sports coverage of the 1997 Bush Clash continues after this message and a word from your local station. The track condition is caution the first half. Well, the 1997 Bush Clash has been completed. A relentless Terry Labonte came off the point and wouldn't give it up. Here's the order. On that first run, Labonte, Marlin, Wallace, the top three. Mark Martin in second place and uh, Dale Jarrett in fourth. Ted Musgrave moved to take fifth at the start-finish line, moving around the Jeff Burton car. Gordon to 12th on that finish. Ricky Craven got himself a ninth. Mayfield in 10th. So when they line them up, those that were in the rear will be up in front, and that means you're going to have Earnhardt and Bobby Labonte in the front row. Let's go to Dick Bergman. Well, Earnhardt is going to be coming in here very shortly. Here he comes now, and they're going to put four fresh tires on his Snickers. That was a last-minute decision. They were going to put tires on the car that had been roughed in earlier, and at the very last minute, Larry McReynolds said, no Snickers. The problem with the car seems to be, have you heard this story before, ignition. Same sort of situation they had last year. They're switching to the second ignition system, and hopefully he'll have a better shot at the second half. That's the one that really counts. Let's go to Mike Joy. In the defending champions pit, Dale Jarrett, they put a right front tire on Jarrett's car and made a very slight chassis adjustment to the left rear jacking screw. And it looks like they're, well, they're starting to let a little air out of the left rear tire, and now they're going to replace it. The left sides, they're mounting sticker tires, uh, a no, contrast to what Dick Bergman reported. And uh, having a little look at a tire rub here on the left rear fender. Hot stickers on the left side, and a uh, little change here on the Let's right side. He's talking to his driver, as you can Torque hear in the background. Wheels, okay to torque it up. What changes are you making and, and why? Uh, the car's a little bit tight, Mike, so we'll get around the bite out of it, add a little air pressure to the right rear, send him on his way, and hopefully he can go from the back to the front like he did last year. Okay, hood is up on Bobby Labonte and on Johnny Benson. Ken? Field getting organized for the restart and the second half of this race. Inverted start. Action in the $370,000 Bush Clash. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Econo Lodge. Spend a night, not a fortune. 
taking a look at the race summary after those first 10 laps, it was one leader all the way, Terry Labonte. Averaged over 185 miles an hour. Of course, there were no cautions. The biggest move was Ted Musgrave, who started 10th and finished 5th. Mm. The Budweiser blip and its eye in the sky camera. Proud to provide you with these live shots a thousand feet above this two and a half mile racing facility. Yeah, right now is when the driver, reality just hit him when he comes back around. He says, golly, why'd I win that first segment? <laughs> Look where I am now. Well, here comes Earnhardt. 91, 93, 95. Odd years. This is 97. As you take a look at that inverted grid, it's like short track racing on Saturday night. We got Bobby Labonte and Dale Earnhardt in row one. In row two, there's Jeff Gordon and Ward Burton. Row three will be Jeremy Mayfield and Ricky Craven. For row four, Ernie Urban, Johnny Benson there. Row five, Jeff Burton, Ted Musgrave with that big move in the first 10 lapper. Row six is Dale Jarrett and Rusty Wallace. And row seven, Mark Martin and Terry Labonte. They'll be men on a mission. Here's Mike. Bobby Labonte's uh, crew had the hood up for some time, Ken. They think the ignition timing is off. If he's driving a Ford, that wouldn't be a problem. The distributor's on the front of the engine, but with a Chevrolet, they would have to take off the cold air box and the air cleaner to get to it. They closed the hood and sent him out there the way it was. There's a big difference in the money in the first segment versus the second segment. So, you know, you got to think about that. I mean, the way the race is set up, you got to figure out. You got to have a little bit of strategy. We were talking about passing people, but you got to know where you're going to be at the second segment. That's when it counts. And you pick a hole and try to hope it's the right hole and try to fill it. 14 Bush Clash starters represent 11 Winston Cup I don't championships. Think so. That's Ray Evernham. 150 pole positions, 198 victories, $109 million in winnings rolling around that track. Jeff Gordon settles down and gets ready for this run. And he's wishing Rick Hendrick well. Going in for some treatment in the hospital. Yeah, I'd like to say hi to Rick, and also like to say hi to my dad, and hope he's doing all right today. How is Leroy? He's doing very well. He's taking some treatments now, and, uh, you know, I miss you, Dad. I wish he's here. Your biggest fan. Well, here's Jeff Gordon looking out from the inside of row two. Pace car coming in. We're ready to go racing once again with Ned Jarrett, Darrell Waltrip. I'm Ken Squire as we watch him come to the line for the 97 Bush Clash <clears throat> decision time. Ten laps. Clear high, clear if you want it. See, uh, Labonte hadn't been able to go. You know, his cars looked like it was real slow, but he got a good start there. Fading back a couple of spots, Earnhardt. Maybe that, just getting his breath. He probably didn't Ooh, want to get hung on, out if he could help it. Look come at on. Jarrett coming out of the back. Oh, this is a perfect scenario when you're in the back. There are two or three wide up ahead of you. It really gives you a lot of draft. Jeff Burton goes. Benson goes. Craven trying to stop him. Started to move out. And look at right in between cars, Ernie Urban. Well, Jerry hoped to fall him through there, but he couldn't get there quick enough. But that gap closed up on him. But he took four. Ernie Urban's race cam. He's the guy that's on the move. He's 190 the guy that's miles got the an speed. hour. And we got him three abreast back there. Now they get down to two as Ricky Craven backed off a little bit. Out in front, Bobby Labonte. Jeff Gordon still lying there in second spot. And there goes Gordon. I think he's got the move right there wow. into turn one. He probably should bring Rusty with him. And Rusty came from 12th to third in one lap. And there's Ernie wow. right there, too. So the, they're looking pretty good right now. What a move on Rusty Wallace going reminiscent of some of Dale Earnhardt. Look at Jeremy Mayfield down here, Ned. Jeremy Mayfield three wide down on the inside, and he's going by. Whoa. Dale Jarrett on the bottom, headed for three. Pitches what? it down in. Ernie had a problem. Ernie really had to get out of the throttle. Uh, Ken, look at him. He fell way back. 14 guys with one thing on their mind. Checkers or wreckers before this one's over. There's still three of breath. Bobby Labonte is the meat in the sandwich. He's just trying to hang on there. I'm really impressed with Labonte because, I mean, he didn't run that well in the first segment. Well, no, he's falling back. That's more important is up in there. Ricky Craven works on the bike. 
of the 88. Down come on, baby, Swiddle. come on. That old boy. <laughs> come on, Brian, jump up and down with me. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> help. that's Todd in there. That's, a, that's your cheerleader. That's what yeah. I was telling you. Everybody gets in this race. Todd Parrott, the crew chief for number 88, Dale Jarrett. You saw Benson just slip down to the inside as they hit the third turn. Jeff Gordon out in front. Rusty Wallace in that second spot. First and third, Earnhardt. Well, you know, we didn't hear him say anything was wrong with Gordon's car in that first segment, so I think he was probably just doing what we thought he'd do and get himself up front in the second half. Ward Burton is in fourth. Jeremy may feel fifth in the 37. on it the last time when we pitted. Boy, Terry can't make He's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Terry got what he won. I won the first segment. Y'all had the second. <laughs> got his 30,000. That's right. I had a good show. Made my sponsor happy. Listening to Tom Parrott trying to bring the 88 of Jarrett around as Gordon continues to lead Wallace number two in second and Earnhardt number three secures third and there's about a two car length interval between third and fourth position as they come down out of four. You got to be impressed with Ward Burton and Jeremy Mayfield. Yeah, I mean, those are young guys that are, are very inexperienced in this race. Back in six, Jarrett, seventh, Benson. Benson doing a great job also. He's, this is his first bush flash. Three Pontiacs came out from the start. Now take a look up in front. Here is Gordon leading. Gets himself about a one car length advantage off that critical second turn. If you can get out of there perfectly, get that car to cut right, you can really build that horsepower up in the back straightaway. I've been impressed with Rusty this week down here. He qualified well. He's running well here today. And, uh, you know, this is not one of his favorite racetracks. Mike Joy standing by, former winner of this event. 87. 87 winner of the Clash and the 500. He's been in 14 straight Bill uh, Bush Clashes. Bill Elliott, what are you seeing out here now? Well, it looks like if uh, Rusty Situation. But it's going to depend on if, if Gordon will give him the room to pull down on him. As I saw in the last race, it's kind of they fought a little bit, but I think Mark kind of gave up a little bit on Terry. But if Rusty pulls down on Gordon and gets it too wide, I think Earnhardt's going to capitalize on that one. If the front two cars or three cars stay single file, are you afraid to pull out if you're behind them? Well, I think at this at this situation, it's you know, for, for the no longer in the race is, I try to pull out because whatever you lose, if either you're going to win the race or you're going to the back and, you know, second, you ain't going to do no better. So I'd go for it. It's hero or zero, Ken. Absolutely. Bill Elliott, man who started this race 14 times, but not in it this year. Last lap at 188.4. That's a lot quicker than the first race. And I'll tell you something, people at home may not realize, but that guy in front right now is doing a lot of defensive driving. He's not running the line that he would be normally running if he wasn't trying to hold them guys behind him. He runs the middle of the racetrack. He runs around a good bit off of the corner, different line, seeing the, if there's anything there. Jarrett looking on the high side. Nothing yep. there. And Ernie Irvin comes underneath him, sets him back, and with him goes the number six. Now that another spot, Mark Martin. The power on Ernie Irvin. Let's go down to the pits. Ken, they're not happy with Ernie Irvin's car. They're not exactly sure what's wrong. Robert Yates said it just won't run. Ken? Now, he, he had a thing going toward the front there, and then all of a sudden he got three wide going into three over, and it looked like it took the air off this point. and he really sent him backwards. He's coming back now, though. Gordon continuing to stay on the point, and Wallace, after that first lap move from 12th up into second. There you got Mark Martin and Terry Labonte, and they're at the back of the field, and they won the first segment. So drafting and positioning in this race is, is so critical. With seven and a half miles to go, you've got Gordon deployed first, then Rusty Wallace right there. Anybody got anything more to show? I think they're, they're showing everything that they got right now. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is going to be what Rusty does to the 24 car, to Gordon. I don't think that Ward Burton will be a lot of help to Earnhardt. And uh, that could be Earnhardt's Achilles heel right now, is the car behind him. Because that Pontiac is just, they haven't shown to be that quick out front. Two laps to go this time by. Here's Mike Joy. Mike Skinner, if we've learned anything standing up here, it looks like it's that you've got to have help. Yeah, I tell you, you know, we did a little drafting practice down here in the winter and uh, with the cold air box. It seems like you get right up behind a car and it hits the brakes. I don't know if we're seeing a little bit of that right here or not. We'll find out next Sunday, I reckon, or maybe Thursday in the 125. What he means by that, Ken, is this time the air cleaner is hooked up directly to where the air goes into the engine, and we're taking in all cold air this
this time. And there's a lot of concern about whether that's good or bad. A lot of say that's going to be helpful on getting any of that heat off the engine itself. Now, as we come down with a lap to go, Gordon first, Wallace second, Earnhardt third, Burton fourth, Ernie Irvin is in fifth, Mayfield is in sixth, Mark Martin in seventh, and Benson eighth for the line. All right, you're down by three. Give it to Michael Jordan and see if he can sink it. <laughs> see if Jeff Gordon can hold off Rusty Wallace. This Out of is, two. This is the toughest part in the race right here. It's when you come off that corner and want to know if you wonder if you got enough to make the move or not. And he doesn't have. That's a pretty much a done deal, looks to me like. Gordon takes us down out of turn number two. Wallace closing in. Yeah, he needed to make his move off turn yeah, two if he's yeah. gonna have it. It's a done deal when they come off a two. Down for the checkers, to the strike. Three wide out and back, but where it counts, for the big money. Across the line for the checkers. Give it to Jeff Gordon, his second win in the Bush Clash. Won it at 22 years of age, back in 1994. Wheels another victory here today. Gordon coming out on top. Wallace in second from 12th spot. Then it's Earnhardt for third. Ward Burton in fourth, Ernie Urban in fifth. Mark Martin comes across six. Dale Jarrett back there in seventh. Let's see. That would in that last shuffle, Ricky Craven back up to eighth position. Johnny Benson dropped to last, dropped to ninth on that last lap, and Jeremy Mayfield wound out the top ten with Terry Labonte, Ed Musgrave, Bobby Labonte, and Jeff Burton rounding out the top fourteen. Victory Lane's where they're headed. That's where you'll be headed to meet the winner of the 1997 Bush Clash right after this. Back with you at Daytona, and let's go right to Victory lane with Mike Joy. Jeff Gordon climbs out. Ray Everham told him, don't jump on the roof. <laughs> They've still got to get this car through post-race inspection. Second win in the Bush Clash for Jeff Gordon in that second half. It started out kind of wild there, and then you took command, and that pretty much dictated the race. Well, I got a real bad start on that first 10 lapper, and, uh, you know, then Earnhardt was battling me for who was going to be on the front row for the second 10 lapper, but, uh, you know, I knew the, the whole key was to the restart uh, that last time, and, and Bobby Labonte's car didn't really, you know, take off real well, so I gave him a little bit of help, and, uh, we, you know, when I got in front of Earnhardt, I was like, man, this, this is exactly what we need to do, and uh, if I can just get by Bobby now, and... Uh, Rusty actually helped me out a little bit there, and I, I might learn a little bit from him in Japan. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying it's better to have the lead than to try to take it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there are some of those guys that had real fast cars. They could pull out and pass, but you got to have a partner. That's all there is to it. If somebody doesn't pull out with you, you got to have more than one, too. Uh, then, then you're not going to go anywhere. Jeff Gordon wins the first race of Speed Weeks. Now Dick Bergman with Rusty Wallace. And Rusty Wallace almost won the first race. Second place isn't too bad, given your history at this place, of not doing as well as you might like. Gotcha. Well, I was trying to get him to help me, but anyway, now I'm real happy with it. The car ran really good, uh, it handled perfect, and this did all I could do. Uh, I got a good jump in that second restart, and that was really good to help me a lot. Car ran well for a restrictor plate race. Yeah, you got that right. We qualified fourth yesterday. I really thought we could have got it on the front row for Penske and all the crowd, but uh, we get up fourth, we'll be okay, I think. Let's see if we can get Dale Earnhardt for a minute. Once again, ignition problems. Is that what caused you to not be able to win this thing today, Dale? No, I, I don't think. I don't think ignition problems or anything. I, I couldn't get up to help Rusty, and really, once you got nose to tail, it, that's all you could do. You couldn't pull up, pull out, or do nothing. So it just ride along in, in line. Ward couldn't get to me to help me, and you know, it just it was just some kind of race. I don't. I look for the same thing Thursday and on Sunday, so it's not going to be good. Except you know he wants to be in victory lane on Sunday, Ken Squire. The Intimidator beaten by the Dominator, Rick Hendrick today, who has his cars win both the first segment with Terry Labonte and the overall with uh, Jeff Gordon doing the number. You know, there's no better way to Final results on the 1997 Bush Clash with Gordon, Wallace, Earnhardt, the top three out here. Then Ward Burton in fourth, Ernie Irvin got back to fifth, Mark Martin sixth. Taking a look back through the field. Yeah, Dale Jarrett uh, had a good run, but not like I know he'd like, and there's our... Our buddy Cravens and uh, Benson there. In the Mayfield, Terry Labonte got nowhere in that second round, finished 11th, and Ted Musgrave back there in 12th and rounding out the field. It was uh, Jeff Burton on the tail end with uh, Bobby Labonte just in front of him. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about uh, Ernie Urban getting shuffled back there at that one time. He was really coming up through the field pretty good in the car number 28. And 
Here he is, right in the center. Right there is Ernie Urban's car. Okay, yep. we'll move it forward, and we'll watch him go forward. And he moves down. Dale Jarrett moves down. Looks like they might have made a little contact right there. They did make contact. Urban had to back off, and Jarrett went on uh, into the banking there and maintained his uh, position. But that back off cost Ernie several positions, but he did work his way back up then. Yeah, he was trying to get in behind Dale is what he was trying yep. to do, and he didn't quite have him cleared. Yesterday, qualifying for the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. What surprises we had here. Surprise number one right here. That's Mike Skinner, Childress Racing. But that's this new driver, came out of the truck racing series. He's going to be on the pole. And this guy, out of a ride last year, onto the front row this year. Steve, Steve Grissom. Boy, what a ride he had. Mm -hmm. I tell you, that's exciting to find two guys like that, you know, with limited experience and uh, really struggled, uh, certainly Grissom has. And I tell you, Skinner's going to be a good one. I think he's going to do a, lot, a great job for Childress. I don't know how they figure these guys out, how they find them, but uh, he found him a good one. Take a look at some of those other fast times from yesterday. The twin 125s will be on CBS. That's next Saturday afternoon after we bring you live that Grand National Gargoyle 300 race right here. Uh, on CBS. That's next Saturday and of course Sunday at noon we talk about these surprises in qualifying. We're in for a sensational 39th annual Daytona 500 gentlemen. Yeah. I think the surprise is, is that in, in the wintertime testing we come down here and the guys come out with fast speeds and we think that's the guy to watch and we end up with two guys that are totally, certainly total surprises on the front row and the guy that qualified 14th I thought that was pretty impressive. Well I right. thought that was it. I wanted to bring that up. I tell you DW <laughs> didn't do bad. No. One, one thing bad you won't have to take a champion's provision will get in this day. A year ago, there were 52 cars here, and I was 50th quick. So I, I think we've made a little progress. Hey, is this going to be your last 500? You know, did you notice when I was going around no, there, Ken? No, that's what and, I asked. And, uh, is this going to be your last 500? There's one 500. thing, I that, sil that, that chrome car, that Western Auto car, is so pretty down on the bottom of that How racetrack. And I tell you, <laughs> running Daytona is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Have you ever run Daytona? No, I've walked it. <laughs> Ned just run Daytona. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's fun. Frustrating. They, it is. It is. I think Earnhardt hit the nail on the head or hit his head on the nail. I'm not sure which. But <laughs> it, this, this race is going to be just like that Thursday, positions, everything. Restrictor plate racing is frustrating. Thank you very much, Darrell Waltrip, and you too, Ned. It's been fun being up. We were with you for the Bush Clash. Say, for Ned Jarrett, Darrell Waltrip, Mike Joy, Dick Bergen, Ken Squire saying so long from Daytona International Speedway, where Jeff Gordon has won the 1997 Bush Clash.